effectively entering long and effectively entering short. And when we study these, you will see that the two are closely related as far as the setup is concerned. The first what I want to do is frame up our mindset on the long side, and then we're going to flip it. You will see, you'll go, oh, this makes sense. This is one of the beautiful things we try to do in Mission Winners, is to show things that conceptually make sense. Here's SSO for you. We're going to load this in right here. This low is higher than this low. This low is higher than this low. It's the higher low setup. And it picks up, volume's less there, and then you get the igniting bar, and it's off to the races. That's SSO. I'm going to take a step further. And again, I want to get this down first, because then we're going to flip the coin. But you will understand the concept. IWM. This low is higher than this low. It's lower than this low, but it's higher than this one, and it starts to take off on a pickup in volume. Right here, look at the volume bar. It picks up, and it runs. It's not a huge run, but it runs. MDY. This low is higher than this low. Do you agree? Sure. It's, it, everybody sees it. It starts to pick up on a pickup in volume. See this? You see this inside bar? Look at the volume on this inside bar versus the down bar. Volume is heavier. Notice how it closed near the highs. It's exhibiting strength. So much power that the next day the thing actually gaps up. So we're mastering the long side. A couple more and then we're going to flip the coin. Amazon. This low is higher than this low, right? I have this marked up because we did this one too. It starts to pick up here on a slight pickup in volume. Follows through the next day. Buys right in here. Okay, I have them marked. Buys. Higher low setup. Pushing through. Max list stock. Love it. I'm going to show you another one here. Microsoft. Higher low setup. This low is higher than this low. And it starts to pick up. Look at the volume pickup on this bar, folks. Notice where it stopped, though. Rallies up right to the old highs. Charts. Charts are a reflection of human emotions. Fear. Greed, panic, complacency, you could even add this one, relief. You can say, how do you mean that, Pat? There were people that bought this up here, Microsoft, and they held on to it and fell all the way down to here and then here, and then it rallies all the way back up. And where does it stop? Think this through. Again, charts are a reflection of human emotions. There's psychology in this. Rallies right back up to the old highs and it starts to drop. There were people that bought this stock up here and watched it drop all the way down here. And then watched it rally all the way back up. And when it gets near their price, they said, thank heaven, Harry, or thank heaven, Ethel. We're near our price. We're selling. And it's reflected in the charts. Here's one more I want to show you. NVIDIA, higher low setup. This low is higher than this low. We did this right here. Right there. Fine. Look at the volume pickup. And off to the races. That's a huge run. And you can say, that has nothing to do with shorting. Oh, yes, it does. We just illustrated several times the higher low setup. Now, let's flip the coin and look at the other side. I'm going to take a look at SDS. SDS is the inverse of SSO, the exact inverse. Here's SDS. And what do you see here? right here. What do you have here? You have a higher low. This low is higher than this low. Starts to lift up. See the volume pick up? And it starts to rally. Where does it stop? Near the 200 day. This is the inverse. When the market, when the spiders are, or when the S&P 500 is falling, this goes up in price. It rallies up to the 200 day. It starts to fall. Look at this bar right here. It gaps down it drops down and reverses and closes near the highs on a pickup in volume. See it? This low is higher than this low. It's a higher low setup. This could have been bought here or the next day pushing through the 200 day. That, it's the same pattern, folks. It's the exact same thing. A higher low setup on the long side or the higher low setup on the short side using an inverse ETF. I love QID, I, I will tell you this team, 
I love SSO and QLD, and I love SDS and QID. And they're plenty fluid. You're With this, you're investing or shorting the entire S&P 500 with two for one leverage. So you have diversification of the entire, or 500 stocks, okay? And diversification, and you have two for one leverage. Let's take it a step further. Here's QID. You have a higher low here, folks. This low is higher than this low, and it starts to take off on a pickup in volume. Until you have mastered the art of going long, be very conservative going short, all right? Using the inter inverse ETFs, though, you're buying it. From a psychological perspective, I think that's very useful. So let's continue onward here. A couple other examples. Tesla had the higher low setup here versus here, right? And this was a great run. We bought this. You can say, okay, well, we're shorting now. What do we do? And I'll show you. Right there. What do you see? You see a little shelf. What do you notice? This is very important. This is what we teach all the time at Mission Winners. Every price and volume bar talks. Tell me about this bar. Oh, it's a green bar. It's a good bar. How did it open? Right there. Rallies up. How did it close? Closed in the bottom fourth of its range on heavier volume. It wasn't buying. It was selling. They sold into that. And it's going sideways here, forming a small shelf. You see it? Everybody can see it. A fifth grader could draw it right there. It's just going sideways. We could say, that's a pretty ugly selling bar right there, right? That's, that's the in-depth analysis we do at Mission Winners. Don't assume that just because it's a green bar, it's a good bar. And don't assume that just because it's a red bar, it's a bad bar. Analyze price and volume. Open high, low, close volume. They sold on that bar. It's got a flat shelf right here. Gosh, I guess if it loses that shelf, um, you know, maybe that would be a potential place to short. Oh, gee whiz. Surprise, surprise. It does. It loses it. And guess what? The icing on the cake, it did it on a big volume surge. Everybody saw this. Clean and simple shelf. Say, gosh, I guess if it takes out that, that shelf or that line right there with volume, maybe that could be a short. And it is. You want to know the beautiful thing about this? I have to share this with you. Always, always have a bailout point when you buy or when you short. This is the best part. If you short this, taking out that white line, where would you cover? If it falls and reverses and takes out the highs of that bar, this bar right here, you were wrong. Therefore, you could cover for a very small loss. This is the other thing that's beautiful. You're looking primarily at daily charts, hourly charts, and 30 minutes. Very rarely 10-minute charts. There it is, right there. See it? And what's it do? Flaps around, and there you are. By the way, just like when you're going long, when you get a gift like this right here, this is a gift, folks. I mean, that's a big gift. Right? 100 points in a day? Cover some. If you get a gift to the long side, you'd sell a little bit into strength. You get a gift on the short side, it's a great lesson to remember. Let's continue onwards. All right, I just want to give you some more examples here. By the way, this isn't textbook. This is, in, this is the real world stuff. All right, this is getting down and, and actually doing it. Here's Apple. Apple, what do you have here? Well, we know about the lower high here. You know, this one actually, excuse me, lower low but it's still lifted, and I wanted to show you that. And you can say, why would you show that this? To tell you something, and I'm gonna be brutally blunt with everybody. Do not think that every time you get a setup that it works. The company handle, Bill O'Neill, the company handle setup, he's the guru. Well, if it's so great, then why does he, and I'm not casting any stones at Bill O'Neill, he's one of my heroes, but if, if it worked every time, why would he talk about limiting losses? The same thing's true going long, the same thing is true going short. You have to have rules and tactics. Most people don't really talk about this. You've got to have rules and tactics going long. You have to have rules and tactics going short. So now we're looking at this and I'm going to give you another setup. It rallies up to the 50 day and reverses down on a pickup in volume. Gaps down falls and reverses up but on less volume. Rallies up the next day on even less volume. 
The next day it rallies back up to the 50 day on a pickup in volume, but less volume than this down bar. What's it do the next day? It gaps down and it drops down on a pickup in volume. Folks, there it is. People saw this. You, com you combine it with the market action and look what happens. There you go. That is a potential setup. Now that one's involved, okay? That's advanced. But I want to show it to you, not to confuse, but just to illustrate, explain what to look for. And, and I'm going to say this again. I really mean this. I'm speaking from my heart. Until a person has really mastered the art and made good money going long, please be cautious going short. Just like we always control risk when we buy, we must always control risk when we short. A clean and simple long entry gives us a clean and simple exit for a much smaller loss. The same thing is true with shorting. Don't let it run away from you. Okay? I've just... You got to control risk. We're big on risk control. Let's take it a step further, shall we? There's Amazon right here. This is a daily chart, by the way, okay? And I'd like to point something out to you. It gaps down on heavy volume. It lifts up right here on good volume, but less volume than it fell on. The next bar, it actually closes down, but it does it on low volume. See this? So it's okay. It's not bad. The next bar, it goes up on a pickup in volume. This is, this is shorting entries, okay? But remember, this is advanced stuff, all right? The next bar, it gaps down. The market's crummy, right? The next bar, it gaps down, starts to fall. Where could a person have shorted? Taking out the lows of this bar, right here. A more advanced entry, and again, just combining price and volume and market action. It gaps down, starts to fall. You could take a look at a 30-minute chart, all right? And here it is right here. You could short in this area right here. I'm going to do something for you to help you, okay? Bear with me. We're going to take off some of these moving averages so that you can see this. I'm not doing this to confuse you. I'm doing this to hopefully help you. That'll work. Now you can see the pattern easier. It rallies up. It gaps down. Okay. This is the 5th. All right. The 5th of May. Right in here. If a person shorted right in here, where would, where would be your stop that meant, hey, I'm wrong. You short here and it starts to drop. Don't short all the way down here. You're shorting in here on that gap down. The market's crummy. You short here. The real world, okay? It's a 30-minute chart. Where would you cover if you're wrong? If it starts to take out the highs of that bar, buy back at least half your shares. You must always control risk. Everybody talks about what they can make. We always have to control risk. I can't stress that enough, okay? I'm going to go back here because I'm going to put all my limit alerts in there. All right, we'll do that. Now I'm going to show you another one here. Facebook. We know the market's crummy, or meta, we can call it meta. We know the market's crummy. Watch this. Clean and simple shelf right here, right? And what did it do? It rallied up, big moving average. What's the moving average everybody talks about, folks? Oh, the 50-day. Yeah, the 50-day. Look at this. It rallies up to the falling 50-day. It's formed a shelf here. Well, it's simple. I guess if it loses that shelf on volume, maybe that would be a short. Oh, gee whiz. Look at that. See this? And again, folks, it's simple. It's been falling. It's a little bit over the 50-day. It's gone up. There's no volume. There's no conviction in buying. Simple shelf right here. Just the lows. Just draw a simple line. Nothing fancy. Okay. By the way, you notice? No stochastics. No oscillators of any sort in any of this. Charts. Simple charge. Say, okay, it lifted up here, but you know, volume picked up a bit, but man, it ain't a heck of a lot of conviction. And I'm telling you what, they knocked the tar out of this thing. I just don't see a lot of power. It's right here at the falling 50-day. It's below the falling 200-day. Things to look for. 
Boom, right there. Falls through that line on a pickup in volume. Where do you short? Not down here, falling through the line. There you go. There you go. There you go. And now this is the other important point. This is why we must, right here, why we must cover some. You know, I always talk about selling into strength, um, covering short, covering into weakness. Don't get greedy. Because if you do, all of a sudden, all the gains are gone. You see that? There you go. So I wanted to point that out. I'm going to do two more for you. I know this video is a little longer, but I want to be extremely precise and specific in illustrating this. Google. Google had a higher low setup. We bought this here and here, and this was a good run. Okay. It rallies up, hits a high here. All right, and then it falls on a heavier volume here, and then it rallies right back up to the old highs. The high on this bar is 2875.87. The high on this bar is 2874.24. Okay, this bar is lower than this bar. I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. This bar's high is a little bit lower than this bar's high. It exhibits greater weakness. See the volume here? Volume wasn't that strong. The next bar, it starts to drop down, but it doesn't take out the lows of the previous bar. Okay, this is called an inside bar. So what would you wait for if it takes out the lows of that inside bar? The next day, it gaps down and drops on a pickup in volume. A person could short here, right in here, especially when the conviction, when it starts to lose the 200 day moving average line, which is the purple moving average and it drops. Be a master at the art of going long. Hone those skills and then work on the short side too. Wanted to point it out and I hope it helps you. That's my goal. It, illustrating in a way that conceptually makes sense and if it does you can apply it. 